Hi, I'm Dr. Nick Campitelli. In this video, we are performing what's known as a chylectomy, which is cleaning out the arthritis in a gray toe joint. So you can see we're making the incision dorsally. Some people will make a curvilinear incision. I tend to make a linear incision right over the gray toe joint. Then we are extending our incision in the skin here. We'll go through the skin and identify the extensor hallucis longus tendon. That's the first structure that we're looking for because it is crucial. You want to find the extensor hallucis longus tendon and retract it laterally. So we're making careful dissection through the skin and subcutaneous layers. You'll start to see that tendon pop into the incision site. Now we're going to retract it laterally and we're making a small extension in our incision. It's easier to retract with a larger incision you can see more of your underlying tissues and you'll do less damage by retracting with a larger incision so we've identified the ehl tendon we go right down to the great toe joint so we're making that incision right through the capsule down to the joint and we're cauterizing some vessels here once we identify the joint we'll start freeing up the capsular and periosteal attachments And we're reflecting those off the head of the metatarsal as well as the base of the proximal phalanx. And you'll see this is done in a manner that's somewhat tedious because the inflamed joint and all the arthritic changes cause fibrosis of your joint capsule. So you will start to see it's very difficult to reflect away all these capsular structures, much different than if you were doing an open bunion procedure. So you'll encounter small fragments. You'll see here shortly there's fragments that we'll be taking out. And we're making some J strokes dorsally, cutting away from our tendon area. And it's a very tight joint. You have to remember because it's very arthritic. So you'll lose space to the joint. The cartilage has been eroded and the joint is kind of ankylosing itself or fusing itself together. So now we're cutting our medial collateral ligaments as well as more joint capsule and periosteal structures. And you just have to keep working the 15 blade back and forth, back and forth, reflecting away your periosteal and capsular attachments. And once we're in the joint, we'll keep making what we call J strokes around the head of the metatarsal working upward. You're always cutting away from your skin. You don't want to cut toward the skin. And you want to try and plantar flex the great toe because remember you have to get into this entire joint so that we can free up all the adhesions and cut away the dorsal aspect of the metatarsal head. So you're going to see here the base of the proximal phalanx typically has a lip dorsally on the base of it. And that's usually where a fragment is, and this fragment will break off dorsally. The excess force to this joint causes this small fragmentation of the base. So you'll see here we're grabbing that fragment. We're going to make an incision in the periosteal capsular structures that are holding that fragment in place. I'm holding it here with our pickups, and it's going to be excised. That's a large portion. You don't want to cut too much of this out because you can end up reducing the size of the base of your proximal phalanx, but you do want to cut every loose body or loose fragment out. This is a rather large fragment. And they can be difficult to get because they're in a tight space and there is a lot of tissue attachments on it. So I would take your time to dissect it off as opposed to using the rongeur and cutting it away, which you can do here. And that's what we're doing, but we've freed up the majority of it. So the rongeur will give you a stronger grip to hold it while you're excising it. You can see it's a rather large fragment there. It's a little over a centimeter in size. So now we'll go back in, continue to free up our head of the metatarsal. And the goal, what we're trying to do is free this up enough so that we can get our myglamory elevators in there. And that's a large 
scooping instrument that's going to free up the plantar aspect of the metatarsal head. So we keep working back and forth. There's another little fragment medially. And we're using those J strokes again to make sure we've cut away all those collateral ligaments and we'll start plantar flexing our gray toe. And you'll see as we enter the joint, the dorsal 40% of that joint is arthritic and denuded of cartilage. And you'll see subchondral bone, which looks yellowish in color as opposed to the healthy cartilaginous tissue, which should be normal. So that's our meglamry elevator. And we're trying to insert that into the gray toe joint you can see it's not easy and the more experience you have the more of a feel you'll gain for using this instrument and you'll know how hard to push against the plantar structures but what you're trying to do is free up your sesamoid bones using this elevator and you'll work side to side medial to lateral freeing up these adhesions you want to be careful because you don't want to cause damage to your sesamoid bones but you still want to free this up and you'll see it takes some force. And I, I would warn you if you're not used to this, you just go slow. But you do want to push hard enough that you're getting in and getting all the way to the plantar aspect of the great toe joint. Because if you're not, you're not freeing up the sesamoids and you'll continue to have a loss of range of motion of your great toe. And I'm showing all this because I want you to see the struggle that you have to go through sometimes to get this instrument into the joint. So you see, once we get in, then we'll go medial and lateral, working back and forth, and you'll feel those soft tissues give. And you want to be able to get that instrument all the way in, all the way under the metatarsal head, as you can see we've done here. And that's going to free up the joint and give us better range of motion, as well as give us access to the joint to resect our dorsal structures. So you'll see here, the yellow is your subchondral bone and you can see all the cartilaginous defect that's present to the head of the metatarsal and we're going to take off roughly 50% of that dorsal or superior aspect of the metatarsal. So now we're using our sagittal saw and we'll have our assistant retract all of our structures again making sure our extensor hallucis longus tendon is out of the way and we're cutting away a large majority i always say at least 40 percent of that dorsal aspect of the metatarsal head you can cut less but if you're leaving if you're leaving denuded um, metatarsal head where there's no cartilage you're not doing anything helpful to the joint so you want to make sure you're cutting away any place where there is no cartilage and you can see we're just working our way across the metatarsal head that entire 40 to 50% of the metatarsal head gets cut away with this saw. And we'll take our fragment out. And now you'll have two sharp edges, medial and lateral. And we're going to go back in with our sagittal saw and remove this medial and lateral margin. It's kind of like resecting the medial aspect where there could be a bunion deformity. You don't want to take too much and make the joint unstable, but you want to take that prominence away because the patient will feel it. So we're just working away across the medial eminence of that metatarsal head, that fragment gets excised. And now you're going to see another sharp edge that we'll have to smooth out. Sometimes there's some fragments that are connected into the joint capsule so we can use a rongeur to get those out. And now we'll use our rotary burr to file away any of those remaining sharp edges and again we're just working back and forth across the head of the metatarsal trying to round it off or make it smooth and I always say if you run your finger over this and you feel sharp edges then it's likely that the patient's going to do this and they'll feel it as well and you want to pay more attention to the medial aspect because most of these patients will have a small prominence kind of like a small bunion deformity and you're just going to smooth that out with a rotary burr. You want to be careful because this burr is aggressive and if you're not soft in 
nature with your touch against the bone, you can chew out a large portion of that bone. So you want to be very cautious moving across that dorsal medial prominence. And then we'll do the same thing here laterally, taking off that prominence. And it's kind of a common sense approach. You're just making sure there's no sharp margins and you're rounding the metatarsal head. And as I said, I'm taking at least 40% of that dorsal margin. I'm very aggressive with how much I take off dorsally because I've had this fail in the past. The, the more you take, the more motion the patient will get. If you leave behind any subchondral bone and try drilling it to get pseudocartilage to form, it ends up being an arthritic area in the patient's complaint. So I would caution you to take less. You want to take more bone than you would think is necessary. You can see as we flush this out, we have great range of motion of our great toe joint. We'll dry off that dorsal aspect of the cancellous bone, and we're going to put bone wax over that cancellous bone, and this is used to reduce any bleeding that could cause fibrosis of that joint capsule. And then it's time to repair our capsular structures. And if you've done adequate dissection, you will see our extensor hallucis longus tendon will have the capsule just inferior to it. And we don't want to make this capsule too tight because remember, we're trying to achieve an increase in range of motion. If we tighten this up, we're going to restrict the motion. And early on, you're going to have a tendency to want to grab more tissue with your needle as you're suturing just because it's easier, but you don't want to do this. You want to take small bites but you want to allow for some redundant capsule that's there because you did cut away a large portion of bone. And you can see here, we're grabbing some synovitis. This is some inflammatory joint capsule, and we're going to excise that because we don't want that in the joint. It could cause some inflammatory changes as well. So that gets excised out. And you can see it's just a more inflammatory, stringy-like red or erythematous tissue as opposed to normal joint capsule, which is white or yellowish in color. And we're going back in, closing it up. And you might want to check your range of motion as you're suturing, because again, you don't want this to be too tight. Sometimes we'll have our assistant hold the suture for us as we're closing. We call that following and they'll apply attention, it's just easier to close. And we'll tie off our last portion of the capsule, holding that toe straight. I just find it necessary to do that and it kind of keeps the capsule tight as opposed to letting the toe uh, loose because you could sometimes make it over tight. Now we're closing our subcutaneous layer. This is 4-0 Vicryl. I usually run this. The previous capsule was closed with 3-0 Vicryl. You can see our assistant is following here, applying tension as we're closing that. And closing the subcutaneous layer using 4-0 Vicryl. This is our final closure. It's a subcuticular stitch. Sometimes I will close this with 4-0 nylon and let the patient get more active range of motion early on. It's all surgeon preference. This particular case, we used a 4-0 Vicryl for our subcutaneous stitch, and then we went over this with a 4-0 monocryl for a subcuticular closure. And you can see our range of motion here postoperatively is sufficient compared to our preoperative, much better range of motion. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. And if there are any videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave that in the comments section below as well. And feel free to click on any of the videos in our YouTube channel. There's a ton of surgical videos posted. Thanks for watching.